I'd like to welcome you to lecture 15 of uh, our course. We'll, uh, we'll start now to talk about a very interesting part that most of you must have seen it in your electronic courses, which is the solution of uh, Laplace and Poisson's equations. These are two very important equations that appear very often in electrical engineering. Uh, in many areas, um, uh, one of them, of course, is semiconductors and uh, diodes and all types of transistors and so on. So we'll be discussing these two equations, we'll be discussing the uniqueness theorem, and we'll cover material um, uh, from chapter 6, pages 215 to 239. So far we have uh, discussed the number of uh, vector quantities, we know what's an electric field, we know what's uh, an electric flux density vector d, we know uh, the electric potential. Um, we were able, uh, through the study of, of this course, to know that the divergence of d is equal to rho volumetric free. So if you want to, uh, if you measure the divergence of the vector d at one point in space, if it's diverging from that point, then there is a positive charge. If it's converging to that point, then there is a negative charge. This is what really this what, what this equation means. Now, but we know as well, we, we, we know that the uh, electric field is conservative, uh, so its curl is equal to zero. So we're able to express E as minus the gradient of V. We're able to use this identity to express E as minus the gradient of V. So if I replace D here by epsilon E, and then replace E by minus gradient V, I obtain this equation in V. This is um, a second order partial differential equation in V. Remember that the gradient results in differentiating V one time, and the divergence resulting in differentiating it a second time. So this equation contains second order derivatives relative to V. Now, if, if you apply this at one equation, or at one point in space, where well, epsilon does not change. So uh, when you apply it, you're actually applying it and not at a boundary point. This, this will be valid for any region where, for example, you have the same epsilon. So the same epsilon everywhere. Then in that case, the, uh, the, the epsilon is not a function of position, does not change with position. So I can take epsilon out from this differentiation and you have the divergence of the gradient, which will give you nabla squared. Now we talked about this nabla squared operator. So um, you divide by epsilon both sides. The first equation that we have here is called Poisson's equation, and it's named after the French scientist who discovered it. It's simply saying, if you know the volumetric charge density everywhere in your region, then you can obtain the electric potential by solving uh, the, this equation nabla squared v is equal to minus rho volumetric over epsilon. And if there is no volumetric charge density, if there is only surface charge density, say, then in that case, uh, nabla squared v is equal to zero, and this equation becomes Laplace, Laplace equation. Both equations are very well known in electromagnetics, they are very well known in semiconductor theory. They are, used, they are being used over and over again to get the potential, and from the potential you can get the electric field, then you get other quantities. So really this chapter, chapter 6, is, about, is, is mainly about these two equations, how to solve them, how to obtain different approaches of solving these two equations. Well, when we obtain a solution of, uh, of V, um, we, we try to obtain a solution that satisfies Laplace equation or uh, Poisson's equation um, according to some boundary conditions. So for example, uh, very soon we'll be seeing something like this one. We'll be seeing um, a structure looks like this. So maybe the voltage here is equal to zero. The voltage here is equal to zero. Uh, the voltage here is equal to V naught, and this is insulated, so this is connected to a battery. This is V naught, and of course you can see there is uh, there is a, a separation between this V naught and zero here. So the the gradient of the potential is very high. And then I ask you find for for us the potential everywhere at any point inside this domain. What you have to do, you have to go and solve Laplace equation because there are no charges inside and uh, according to the boundary conditions given. But who told us that this solution is unique? What does this mean? There may be more than one solution that satisfy the, this, uh, this Laplace equation subject to the boundary condition 0 here, 0 here, 0 here and V naught here. How do I know the, the, the uniqueness? Well, there is a theorem called the uniqueness theorem, and the proof is in the book of this theorem. I leave it for you to read. I'm not going to ask you any questions about it in exams or so on. It's just a general reading. Uh, there is a proof that if you have V1 that satisfies Laplace or Poisson equation and satisfies the boundary conditions, 
and there is another solution v2 that also satisfies um, Laplace equation and satisfies the boundary conditions then these two solutions must be equal at every point in your domain in other words they are the same solution you cannot have more than one solution okay so this is a great thing about uniqueness theorem because once we obtain a solution for v we know it is the only solution there can be any other solution uh, so this is a uniqueness theorem is very well known in uh, in the theory of differential equations and it helps us to obtain to guarantee the uniqueness of the solutions we obtain so now we know that for electrostatic field if we solve Laplace or Poisson equation we'll, we'll end up with a unique solution as long as our solution satisfies the boundary conditions we mentioned before the different uh, expressions for the Laplace operator or Laplacian operator Nabla squared V um, in Cartesian coordinates of course it's as shown here partial squared v partial x squared plus partial squared v partial y squared plus partial squared v partial z squared is equal to zero so v is in general function of x y and z and then you, when you solve for Laplace equation you have to find v such that this equation is satisfied if you do, of course if you don't have any charges if you have any charges you have to solve the Poisson equation Nabla squared v is equal to minus rho v over epsilon this is the expression for the Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates. It's more complicated. This is the expression for the Laplacian in spherical coordinates. Now, because we have three, three, three coordinates here or three dimensions here, either V will be only a function of one of them and then we can solve directly for V or we have to apply the concept of separation of variables. And I will show you at least one example in, the, in this lecture and you will see many other examples in the tutorials on how to use separation of variables to get your solution. So our target is solve this equa these equations subject to the given boundary conditions. This is our target to, so to determine V as a function of the coordinates. So this is a procedure for solving boundary value problems. They call them boundary value problems. When you solve Laplace equation or Poisson equation subject to given boundary conditions, these are called boundary value problems. Uh, to, solve for, to solve a boundary value problems, we have, of course, to apply separation of variables if your V is a function of more than one dimension. Or if it's only a function of one dimension, you simply integrate directly. And then you will obtain the solution as a function of unknown coefficients. And then the next step is apply boundary conditions to, satisfy the, and to determine the unknown coefficients. Once you have done that, you, have, you now know V at any R, at any position inside your domain. Once you know V as a function of X, Y, and Z, or V as a function of rho phi and Z, of, or V as a function of R, theta, and phi, you apply the gradient operator with a negative sign to get E, and once you have E, you can get D, you can get the, the, the service charges from the boundary conditions, you can get anything that you want. So solving this approach, or using this approach, we have a third approach now for finding the, uh, the electrostatic field. Uh, we mentioned the first approach was using superposition. A uh, second approach was, uh, was getting V through superposition and then uh, getting the minus the gradient of V. Now the third one is to solve the boundary value problem uh, subject to the boundary conditions and then obtain electric field and D and all other quantities as a byproduct. Now let's start to take a look at the simple examples. Uh, we would like to show that the potential function V is equal to rho V over 4 epsilon naught x squared plus y squared satisfies Poisson's equation. So here we, we are really given the solution and we are asked to show that this solution satisfies Poisson's equation. And uh, here you should notice that um, uh, this, uh, the rho V here is your uh, volumetric charge density. So you are asked to, see, to show that this satisfies Poisson's equation. But of course there are no boundary conditions given here. The boundary the conditions are not given here, so boundary maybe boundary are at infinity. They are not really taken not taken into account here in this equation. To show that the solution satisfies La, 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 La Poisson's equation, we simply differentiate v two times relative to x, differentiate it two times relative to y. Of course, v is not a function of z. We don't have to differentiate relative to z. Sum all these second order derivatives and show that they are equal to minus rho v over epsilon. If you differentiate V relative to X, you'll see that the solution is the derivative of X squared will give you 2X. So you get minus 2X rho V over 4 epsilon. Uh, here and here, epsilon is equal to epsilon naught, of course. If you differentiate one more time relative to X, 
you get uh, partial squared v partial x squared is equal to minus two v over two epsilon naught. Similarly, differentiate one more. Uh, you can do exactly the same thing related to y, and because x and y here are symmetric, you'll get the partial squared v partial y squared is equal to minus rho v over two epsilon naught. So uh, if you sum these two derivatives, this one and this one, you'll see that the summation will give you minus rho v over epsilon naught. This means that partial squared v partial x squared plus partial squared v partial y squared is equal to minus rho v over epsilon naught, which is Laplace Poisson's equation. So indeed, this solution does satisfy Poisson equation for a volumetric charge density of rho v. In this second example, we apply Laplace equation to define the field E within a barrel blade capacitor uh, of separation D, voltage difference of V naught, and relative permittivity epsilon R. So what's happening here, we have a barrel blade capacitor, and the barrel blade capacitors, as, as I explained earlier, unless otherwise stated, you have to assume that the separation D is much smaller than the other dimensions. So you can assume that the field is uniform inside uh, the barrel blade capacitor. Uh, we have uh, this barrel blade capacitor, there is no charge inside, it's simply filled with a dielectric, of the electric constant epsilon r, the positive blade is, has a higher potential potential than the negative blade of v naught. The separation between them is d. Would like to find the electrostatic field everywhere in this in this area. So what we have to do? We have to first apply Laplace equation, solve for v as a functional position, and then once you have v, you apply that e is equal to minus gradient v to get your solution. And once you have E, you can get D. Once you have D, you can get the charge on the blades on the boundary conditions, because the normal component of the vector D on the plate gives you the uh, service charge density. So this is the topology of the problem we have. We have the positive plate as voltage V naught relative to the negative plate. And uh, what we do here, we um, we because of the of the well, our assumption that d is much smaller than the other dimensions, we can assume that the field do not really depend on x or y; it will only depend on z. So v will be only a function of z. <coughs> Laplace equation in this area because there is no there is no volume of charge inside this area. There is only surface charge on the on the positive plate and the negative plate, but these are not volumetric charges. So we can apply Laplace equation in this area, which is Nabla squared V is equal to zero. And because we assume that V is only a function of Z, then we are solving partial squared V partial Z squared is equal to zero as shown here. Of course, if you integrate one time relative to Z will give you a constant. You integrate one more time relative to Z gives you another constant. So the solution is C1Z plus C2. How? This is the first step. If it is a, a solve for the v as a function of unknown coefficients, and then use the boundary conditions to determine these unknown coefficients, we know that at z equal to zero, v is equal to zero. If z is equal, if z is equal to d, v is equal to v naught because of the way the battery is connected. So these are the two boundary conditions we need to solve for c1 and c2. Here, if you put v equal to zero, then you must get zero. So this means that C2 is 0. C2 does not exist. C2 is 0. If you put V, Z equal to D, then you must get V equal to V naught. So this means that C1 is equal to V naught over D. So now we know that C2 is 0 and C1 is equal to V naught over D. We have now with a complete expression for the potential V. So once you have the, uh, this is just a summary of what we have done, uh, apply the first boundary condition, we got C2 equal to 0, apply the second boundary condition, we got C1 equal to V0 over D, and this means that V as a function of Z is given by this one. And notice that we selected Z to be pointing from the negative plate to the positive plate. So the electric field will be in the negative Z direction, it must be. So here, once you have V as a function of Z, you can obtain E, you can obtain D, you can obtain the surface charge density on the plates from the value of D. You can obtain any, any electro, electrostatic quantity as a byproduct of this. So we, we apply E is equal to minus the gradient of V. And because V is only a function of Z, this means that you differentiate V relative to Z with a negative sign. So you have partial V, partial Z. This will give you minus V naught over D in the AZ direction. Notice that yeah, as predicted, the electric field is in the minus z because we assume here we assumed from our solution that z is pointing from the negative plate to the positive plate, while the electric field always points from the positive plate to the negative plate. 
so, uh, so this solution makes quite sense. And once you have that, you can proceed to do more post-processing and get more electro electrostatic quantities.